I think we're going to get started here. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about using service workers in Ember. Uh, it was mentioned in the keynote. And let me start off by saying I am really excited about service workers. I mean, I am freaking excited, just like my friend Kristen Wig here. And, and here's why. So I believe that service workers are the next evolution in what we can do in a browser. If you think back to the early 2000s when XHR came out, um, it really changed the landscape of what a web app could be. I believe we're at that same uh, vantage point now where we're, we're going to see service workers really change what we can do with our web apps. Uh, so let me start by telling you how I started working with service workers. So for me, it all started with kids like the ones you see here. Uh, so I work for a nonprofit uh, called Cure International, and we provide life-saving care uh, to kids in 30 countries uh, in the developing world. And for like the last six years, we've been developing innovative technology solutions, including like real-time reporting of our kids in the hospitals. Um, but we realized we we're missing something as an essential tool across our network. And that was a hospital information system. Uh, we needed something so we could provide better oversight of the care taking place in our hospitals and clinics. Uh, and historically, the way we've kept track of everything is through paper records that then get loaded into these bins you see here and uh, transported to remote clinics. Um, it's kind of really clunky. And as a technologist, I know we can do a lot better. Uh, working in the developing world, we also have our own set of challenges, and the most challenging thing is internet connectivity. Uh, so in some locations, connectivity is either poor or non-existent. So when we examine the existing solutions for a hospital information system, we couldn't find anything out there that really solved developing world challenges, uh, so we decided to build our own. And we built something called Hospital Run. It's a, a hospital information system built for the developing world, for hospitals in the developing world. And it's an open source solution uh, that we built for the approximately 14,000 hospitals in the developing world that need a solution like this. Uh, we built it with Ember, of course. Um, we built it for offline and online use. And we have an intentional focus on usability. So when service workers became available, it became immediately clear to me that they were something that we could that would be very useful uh, for hospital run. So as I talk about service workers, I'll be highlighting uh, how they've been helpful in our project, as well as to call out uh, uses in other ap Ember applications. So let me start off with what's a service, uh, what are service workers? Um, it, it was mentioned in the keynote. You may know some things about them, but let's read what the spec says. The spec says, this is a method that enables applications to take advantage of persistent background processing, including hooks, to enable bootstrapping of web applications while offline. So let's break that down a little bit. So the second part of the definition says that it's a bootstrapping of web applications while offline. So if you've heard of service workers before, you probably have heard this offline story. Uh, and in fact, one of the key features of service workers is that they allow your app to run offline. But to say that service worker, excuse me, um, service workers, however, were not the first browser feature to allow you to do this. Our friend AppCache, which has been referenced already and is such a wonderful thing, um, is, was the de facto way of doing offline. And in fact, as was pointed out in the keynote, is still the way to do offline. But there is a lot of pain points in it. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's a declarative. It doesn't really... Um, give you the control that you need. And service workers were kind of created in part uh, as a response to the horribleness of application cache. Uh, but just talking about offline with service workers is just skimming the surface. We're just getting started here. So service workers really give you, as a developer, the power. Uh, so one way to think of a service worker is as this network proxy that allows you to control what happens uh, with every network request. And because service workers uh, are allowing you to interface at the network level, you can run them on top of your existing apps uh, without changing your existing code. Um, so that's an important thing to keep in mind. And there's several complementary browser features 
that can be used with service workers and, and they're important concepts. And the first one is the cache API. So with this API, developers uh, have ultimate control of what gets cached and when. And you can also reach into that cache and pull things out at any time you want to. So really what you're getting here is what used to be only browser internals is now available to you as a developer. And I think that's really awesome. Another feature that uh, is complementary to um, service workers is fetch. And you can kind of think of fetch as like XHR with promises. Uh, it's, it gives you um, the same kind of level of control, being able to pull things from the network, and it's the only way of doing it in a service worker. You can't use XHR inside of service workers. So getting back to our definition of service workers, there's a part that I skipped, and that's the first part that talks about this idea of persistent background processing. And this is an important thing to remember. Uh, service workers are running in the background. Uh, but what exactly do we mean that it's running in the background? Well, when service workers were first introduced, the, they were called navigation controller. But that name was changed to include the word worker. And that part is very significant because service workers are like web workers in that they run in a separate thread. So you think of your typical JavaScript application, it's single threaded, um, this is running in a separate thread. And this will lead us to some performance implications that I'll get to in a bit. So because service workers are workers, uh, it means that they're essentially sandboxed. They're running in their own global script context, meaning that they don't have direct access to your app's code, uh, but they but they do have ways to communicate outside with post messages and even with the cache API. There is one important caveat to using service workers, and that's that they're HTTPS only. The, this doesn't apply for uh, local hosts, so any development, you don't have to worry about it. Um, but the good news here is anymore, we really shouldn't be concerned about the cost of HTTPS, especially when you have uh, services like Let's Encrypt and e even AWS offering free certs. We really don't have an excuse to not run HTTPS anymore. So that's kind of a quick overview of what service workers are. Uh, if you want to know more about some of the details of service workers that I won't get into in this talk, um, I want to mention a couple resources. The first one is this site, Is Service Worker Ready? This has some great overview information, as well as kind of keeping track of, in different browsers, what features are available and, and kind of the status of things. So, so it's really helpful that way. Another useful resource is uh, Mozilla put together the Service Worker Cookbook, and they kind of break down these different use cases um, with these live demos and, and then show you the source code. So it's a really easy way to kind of learn kind of behind the scenes how, how Service Workers work. So uh, I also want to mention that the Chrome Developer Console is a really useful tool. Uh, you can debug your service worker code uh, just as easy as any other JavaScript application. Um, you have the same tools. And the other piece that's in the Developer Console is a view into the cache. Now, um, this is, again, because caching used to be like a browser internal thing, it wasn't really all that easy to see into it. But with the cache API and, and the developer tools, you really can kind of look into it. And speaking of debugging, um, I got trolled by something the other day, and it, something unexpected happened. Um, so I was working on this project with service workers, and I did a command refresh. I had this habit of hitting like command shift refresh, um, and I noticed that my service worker app suddenly wasn't available when my app was offline, and I thought, shoot, like I broke something. I really like just messed up my code. Well, it turns out, the spec actually says, if you do a hard refresh, it basically disables the service worker. So that's just something to keep in mind as a developer. So hopefully this kind of gives you a high level understanding of what service workers are and kind of the, the landscape. But we're here to talk about service workers in Ember. So let's, let's start talking about that. So last year, Tom Dale said this, that uh, service workers should be something that Ember apps get basically for free. Um, I agree, and I just so happened to be working on something around that time. And that was Broccoli Service Worker. So out of the box, Broccoli Service Worker will set up your production builds to include a service worker that will make your application available offline. And it's completely free. Isn't that awesome? Completely free, yeah! So, 
So that, that's Broccoli Service Worker. So, so that's it, really. Like, all you need to do is install Broccoli Service Worker, and you're fine. I can end my talk right now. We can go have our break, and we'll, we'll be good. Well, we're not done yet. Uh, remember that I said that service workers were created in response to the horribleness of application cache. Uh, so one of the particular main issues with application cache is that it didn't give developers as much control over what happened. Service workers, on the other hand, are like choose your own adventure books. So when I was a kid, I remember reading these books that were kind of like a computer game where like you get to a part of the story and it would be like you have to decide like should, should Johnny jump through the, through the uh, creek or, or should he run away and depending on what you did, different outcomes would happen. Um, now I don't remember this one about you are a shark, but it sounds really awesome. And I actually re I read the Google reviews on it and one guy, he was a little disappointed because you can only be a shark in three pages, but it still might be an entertaining read. Anyway, service workers give you as a developer control over what happens. So let's see how we can affect that control with Broccoli Service Worker. So there's several levels of choose your own adventure with uh, Broccoli Service Worker. And the first one is through simple configuration. So in your, in your config file for your app, uh, you can configure some things like uh, pre-cache URLs. So by default, your whole app is pre-cached. That means all your assets, all, all, all the JavaScript images, that kind of thing gets pre-cached. If there's additional resources that you want to pre-cache and always serve them from the cache, you can do so. And the cool thing is because uh, Broccoli Service Worker is part of your build process and part of the live reload, is a new version of the Service Worker gets introduced when you make changes so you don't have to worry about that, that, that data getting stale. It, it automatically is, is getting refreshed. So, so you can, with confidence, pre-cache your whole app. There's things like um, a fallback. So like this is, the use case here is if I'm offline, instead of rendering this server route, go, go render this other one. And, th and then we can do things like network first URL. So, so something like, um, an API call where we want to get the freshest data we can, we use a network first request, and um, if, it can't, if it's offline, it'll fall back to the cache. And then this last piece, uh, include files, will let us bring in, remember I said the um, service worker's script, it, it has a different context than your app, so if you need to bring in pieces of your app, or like in this case, I need to bring in a PouchDB um, library, I, I can do that through the config. So Broccoli Service Worker uh, includes Google's Service Worker Toolbox, and this is really a useful tool in working with service workers. And this allows us to do express-style routing uh, with predefined network strategies. So you can see here there's kind of a list of uh, different network strategies that um, are useful in Service Worker. So, so you may have uh, data that you want to get the freshest, so you, so you always go to the network first, but you want to fall back to cache. Or maybe there's stuff that you just want it to be the fastest. So, th so there's a solution, there's a recipe to do the, to pull back the fastest data. So these options are available to you um, through config. So you can just specify these paths use this, these strategies. Um, but if you want to have finer grain control, uh, what you can actually do is uh, add files to the service workers directory in your app. Uh, and any file in this directory will automatically be included in the service worker that's built for your app. So you can uh, continue to use the service worker toolbox here to do some of the heavy lifting involved with service workers, or you can roll your own code. Uh, so so it's, a, it's a useful way to, to bring in um, your own code into a service worker if you decide to go that route. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the challenges we face with Hospital Run is working in contexts where internet connectivity can be spotty to non-existent. Um, and because this is the case, we need to be able to handle a user's lack of connectivity gracefully in our app. We didn't want them to see the little dinosaur or, or, or even to, to run into some kind of error situation. We wanted to be able to, to handle it gracefully. And so just adding Broccoli Service Worker lets our app run offline, but it doesn't say anything about um, what do we do with data? How, how do we handle that? And 
we need a way to be able to handle the user trying to save or access data offline. So uh, in our case, to handle this particular issue, we added code to handle specific na network database calls. So we set up routes where what we're doing is we intercept that call and instead of, first we try to get it from the network. And if that call fails, we then pull back and grab it from a local pouch DB database. Um, and what's really great about this is the process is seamless to both the user and to your app. Um, the app thinks it's always getting a successful network request even when you're offline because all that's handled in the service worker. And I, I think that's just, it blows my mind a little bit that we can do that in a browser these days, but it's awesome. So you may be thinking offline isn't something you need to care about, though I'm hoping after Tom and Yehuda's keynote, you do realize it's something you need to care about. But let me give you a couple reasons to think about handling offline in your app. The first uh, thing to think about is not only your users being offline, but what happens when your server's offline? Be it um, you know, DDoS or, or, or just someone screwing up. Um, our servers do go offline occasionally. So if we can handle offline um, from both the server and the user, I think that's a win. A second reason to consider offline is our friend Li-Fi. Now I know you've all experienced this, that moment where you're connected to Wi-Fi, maybe even at this conference, and you don't really have an internet connection. We can take that pain away from our users, and I would suggest we should take away that pain from our users. Um, also, while native apps have been able to do offline for a while, there's not, there's still a lot of native apps that don't do offline well. We, as web developers, have an opportunity to do offline well and to give our users a great experience whether they have a great internet connection or they have a really bad one. So maybe offline isn't a concern for you, um, but you may be in a situation where you're writing mobile apps and you have to worry about 2G users or, or users who have a throttled connection. One of the things we do with a service worker is adapt our payload based on the network type. Uh, we, we have some information available in the browser to say, okay, it looks like they're on a 2G connection, so instead of fetching 100 records, I'm only gonna fetch 10. So we can do things like that in a service worker. Uh, and along those lines, for hospital run, we want to be able to monitor response times from the server. So in some of our locations, the Wi-Fi may not be that great, or, or internet connectivity may not be that great, but if we can individually monitor for each user, okay, what's your experience like? We gain some metrics to be able to say, okay, well maybe in the hospitals we need to in improve the, the Wi-Fi network or we need to make sure that when they go out in the field they, they have enough uh, like a, a 3G dongle that they can use to, to get that connectivity. So, so we time out, optionally time out the, the response times. Um, so, so that's kind of looking at service workers from the network side of things, but there are some other things that we can do with service workers. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, because service workers run in a separate thread, there are opportunities to improve performance using a service worker. So typically our Ember applications are single threaded, uh, kind of like this, this guy here. Um, <laughs> but with a service worker, <laughs> now, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> now, 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 I'm pretty sure I've never seen a blue screen of death on a, a, a JavaScript app, especially an Ember app, but the reality is our apps are single threaded. And um, with, a, with a service worker or a web worker, we can use multiple threads in our Ember app. And one of the performance bottlenecks that we had in hospital run was syncing between this local pouch database in the browser and a CouchDB server. And it turned out that IndexedDB, which is used by PouchDB, it blocks the DOM and it can affect performance. So it wasn't a great solution. So what we ended up doing was moving that synchronization into the service worker, and we immediately saw performance gains. Uh, in fact, here's a quote from Nolan Lawson, who's one of the guys behind PouchDB, and he said, yeah, put it in a worker, it'll." He recommends it, so um, I think that's pretty cool. So 
some people have gotten really creative about what they're doing in service workers. And I found this example where someone is running an express server inside a service worker. So they're, in essence, turning the service worker into a server. So you could have an app that's basically serverless beyond that, that first render, beyond that first delivery. Um, and you could do that in an Ember app today. So, so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so we've seen some examples of how service workers can be used in Ember apps today. But as we think about the future of Ember and service workers, where are we headed? So one of the additional features that service workers enable are native push notifications. And I think this was touched on in the uh, keynote. And the thing that we're going to be able to do here is provide native push notifications to our users, which I think is pretty cool. Um, giving people that, that native feel. And maybe you may have even seen this. Uh, Facebook is actually using this uh, in production now. Um, and it's kind of pretty cool. So another forthcoming feature enabled by service workers is uh, background sync. And the idea here is that uh, actions can be deferred until a user has stable connectivity. Uh, so it, particularly in mobile. So in this particular example, what happens is the user goes offline, they send a message while they're offline, and then they go back online, and the message is then sent. And, and, and this provides like a queuing mechanism that certain Ember apps are going to benefit from where instead of having to like build some off the shelf queuing mechanism to sync offline updates, the browser will do it for you. So I think that's, that's pretty exciting and that's uh, coming soon to a browser near you. Uh, right now there's not a great way to test service workers in Ember, particularly if you're talking about command line. So you know, you're running your Travis builds. Uh, Phantom knows nothing about service workers. Um, so it's kind of a gap right now, but um, there, the fortunate thing is there's groundwork in, in projects like uh, this service worker unit testing uh, that I think we can take advantage of in Ember. So as was mentioned in the keynote, service workers aren't in every browser, but we're seeing positive traction in the browser vendors. Microsoft in particular is working on it. Um, and I have confidence that, especially with some of the changes that have been happening in Microsoft, that they will end up um, getting this done. And Opera, or sorry, Opera. Opera, Opera does support service workers. Safari is considering, considering doing service workers, and they've actually indicated in their five-year plan that it's something that they should do. Now, Yehuda made some reference to this of, you know, they may not ever do it, and, and in some, some days I feel that way, but I, the more I think about it, I, I think service workers is such an evolutionary step in browsers that I, I do believe down the road uh, Safari is going to embrace it, and, and just like AppCache and IndexedDB made their way into Safari, uh, we will see service workers in, in Safari. Uh, this was, I think mentioned in the keynote as well, application cache is deprecated in Firefox, and they've actually talked about removing support for it. So while I think application cache is the way to do things now, um, it, or at least it needs to be part of your story, keep in mind that the, that application cache will at, at some point go away. So we need to think about, um, you know, how do we how do we build apps that maybe use service worker where possible and then fall back to app cache, which by the way, the service worker spec says that if, if a service worker is running, it'll ignore app cache. So, so the browser vendors have kind of kept that in mind. Um, so, so really the story is you could do both together and, and end up with something that's gonna cover, I think what was it, 90% of the browsers. Chrome, Chrome's following uh, Firefox's uh, proposal, so, so they're kind of following in their steps. Um, but so it's just something to keep in mind. So lastly, when considering the future of Ember and service workers, I really think we need to start thinking about what it means to bring them into Ember core. And I was encouraged by what I heard in, in the keynote because I know that Tom and Yehuda think that this is important as well. So because Ember data is typically network-centric, it seems that it makes sense that we would take advantage of the multi-threading there uh, to speed up things with service workers. And 
um, I think that the ser that we will use service workers in combination with fast boot to be able to render um, things really quickly and and just give a complete offline story that that really is better than native. So that leads me to ask you a question: As you think about what we currently can do with service workers and what's coming in the near future, I want you I want to ask you to consider how you can use service workers and perhaps contribute work to Ember Core uh, or to additional Ember add-ons. So as I mentioned at the beginning of my talk, I believe that service workers are a huge evolutionary step forward for browsers and we should be taking advantage of that. And one more thing. So Hospital Run is looking for volunteers to help us build an awesome app for the approximately 14,000 hospitals in the developing world that need a solution like this. So you can find out more information at hospitalrun.io. Uh, in your swag bag, you re all receive a hospital bracelet that has our website on it, so you shouldn't forget it, so thanks. And that's it, thanks.